right, and without any more further ado, it's my, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce today's senior speaker, Mr. John Durham. Nobody on their deathbed wishes they spent more time at the office. It was two weeks into school, past midnight, and I had just started my summer reading for economics, and I had to test on the book the next day. I was exhausted, and although I was skimming through the pages as fast as I could, I still stopped to read this line a second time. Nobody on their deathbed wishes they spent more time at the office. This sentence struck me pretty hard. It was as if someone had fit all of my life's dreams expectations and everything important I had learned in my life into just one sentence. And only seconds after I came to that discovery, I had a sudden flashback to the spring's freshman year. Now, I like to live, I like to think that I've lived a fairly normal life. In fact, I probably lived one of the easiest lives in these traumatic lives of anyone in this entire audience. Yet in that instant, I flashed back to the only tragic incident in my entire life. The one time in my life where nothing made sense, the day when I could not stop crying, the day when I will never for, the day I will never forget. Everyone has one of these days, whether it be 9/11, the assassination of JFK, or the loss of someone very close to them. For me, this day was a Monday. It was about 6:30 p.m. I had just finished what was the greatest game of baseball I'd ever played in my life. The game was against the Baltimore Ironbirds 15U Metro Baseball team. I was playing for the Kingsville Kingfishers. The game took place at Loyola's Field. I had two doubles, a single, a walk, the greatest catch I had ever made in my life, and pitched two great innings to finish out the game with a win. Even better, my sister and her best friend were there to watch the entire game. And after my sister had dropped off her friend, she came to a red light at the intersection of Greeley, Greeley Road and Smith Avenue and said, um, the reason why I picked you up instead of mom today is because, and suddenly she broke, burst into tears. My grandfather had recently survived a series of illnesses and strokes, so I instinctively said, no, not Papa, he's not him. She shook her head and barely mustered out two words, the exact diction I will never forget, Uncle Bob. He had passed away the day before while on vacation at his beach house in Avalon, New Jersey. I can still recall the week filled with memorial services, the tears rolling down my aunt's face, and the look and confusion on my younger cousin's faces. What is going on? Why would God do this? Now I know none of you know who my uncle Robert Rieger was, so I'll do my best to summarize his life in a few sentences. Born in Worcester, Pennsylvania, Bob Rieger graduated from Wake Forest University in 1986 and from the Villanova University School of Law in 1989. In 1992, he started a law firm with two partners called Rieger, Rizzo, and Darnell, where he played the largest role in expanding the firm from nothing into a 60 lawyer firm that had offices in five states. Most importantly, he had a wife, Tricia, two sons, RJ and Thomas, and a daughter, Emma. Although he loved his family until death, he often spent too much time at the office and drowned his distress in bottle after bottle of liquor. On Sunday, May 18, 2008, Robert Rieger died at the age of 43 from a heart attack induced by an overdose of cocaine. Nobody on their deathbed wishes they spent more time at the office. I then applied this sentence to my uncle's life. Yeah, I understand that technically he didn't have a deathbed as he was unaware that his minutes on earth were running very slim. But ask yourself this question, in that split second, that millionth of a second between when his heart stopped and when he left this world for good. Do you think he said to himself, Tim, now I'll never see my law firm reach its fullest potential? Or do you think instead he merely reached out his arms and imagined hugging his wife and three kids one last time and said to himself, what have you done, Bob? What have you done? For a while I frowned upon him and how his bad decisions severely hurt the lives of the people I care about most in my life. But recently, I forgave him. I mean, I can only try to explain to you how accomplished this man was. He had everything, money, intelligence, his great sense of humor, athleticism, good looks, 
fame, success, and above all, family that wouldn't trade him for anything in the world. He was my role model. And when I'm alone and I think about him, I don't remember how he died. I can only remember how he lived. I remember playing hockey in his basement with our Jamie as the goalies and him as the shooter. I remember the funny facial expressions every time he made when he sang Without Me by Eminem. I remember the joy on everyone's face every time he walked into a room. We all make, oh boy. We all, we all make mistakes. It's part of being human. Should we shun this man for one bad mistake? Should we let his addiction destroy all of the success and happiness he created in his life? There's no way. Absolutely no way. And so Uncle Bob, I hope you can somehow hear what I'm about to say. I love you, man. I cannot speak for everyone, but I forgive you. You will always be one of my role models. And we miss you down here. But I will say one thing. As much as I want to be like you, I do not want your life. And please let me explain why. Remember your mistake, we can all learn something valuable. If there's one thing I learned from the passing of my Uncle Bob, it's not the whole don't do drugs notion, but rather that an addiction to work can destroy the lives of even the world's greatest men. Uncle Bob, I want to have a great family just like you did. I want to love life just like you did. But unlike you, I will not concern myself with money and work. Instead, I will live my life to the fullest. I will dedicate my life to serving my life's purpose, which in my opinion is to help others as best as I can, especially the brave men and women in the United States military that are willing to lay down their lives at any given moment just so we can live ours in safety. Most importantly, I will never sacrifice these ideals solely for the purpose of personal wealth. And Uncle Bob, I know if you're given just one more chance and you survive that heart attack, you will completely agree with me. And you would have changed your ways in order to meet these goals. But unfortunately, everyone is not given a second chance. I, however, have been given many second chances. No, I've never had a near-death experience or, or anything of the like, but I have been given multiple chances to redeem myself academically, athletically, and socially. Some mistakes were minor and would have no lasting impact on my life. Yet some mistakes that I made in my past have completely altered my future. Yeah, I've run into a lot of trouble in the past few years, and it's all due to mischief and crude humor. But to be honest, that's John Durham. That's who I am. I've had so much fun in my life that I often stop, that, that I often don't stop to think about the effects of what I have, what I say or do have on other people. So I will now take this opportunity to say that there are a number of regrets I have since I, I have had since I've been at Gilman. I, John Durham, as a senior in the upper school, lay on the deathbed of my life at Gilman. And sure enough, the line, nobody wishes they spend more time at the, at the office. Nobody on their deathbed wishes they spend more time at the office. Summarizes how I feel right now. In this case, the office is books and studies. And I can honestly say that if I could do it all over again, I would have spent less time studying and more time hanging out with my friends, taking advantage of what Gilman has to offer, and simply having fun with my high school career. Sure, my GPA may have been slightly lower, and as a result, I would be attending a slightly less prestigious college as I plan to do. But every day now, I ask myself, does that really matter? As I learned from Uncle Bob, the primary purpose of life is to enjoy life. It's that simple. Generally speaking, the better grades you get, the more better college you attend. And the better college you attend, the more money you make in your life. But ask yourselves this question, does that really matter? To quote Bob Marley on his deathbed, his final words to his son Ziggy were, money can't buy life. And think about that. One of the wealthiest and most famous men of his generation, and arguably the most influential person in recent history, actually said that money does not buy happiness. If you truly believe that earning a million dollars as a lawyer and emotionally caged by alcoholism and drug addiction will make you more happy than a, than a person, than an average middle class American who sure works less and uh, earns more money, earns less money, um, will make you, oh boy, God, I messed up a lot. 
<laughs> if you truly believe that earning a million dollars as a lawyer, emotionally caged by alcoholism and a drug addiction, will make you a happier person than a middle class American that works less in order to spend more time with his friends and family, I won't blame you. But I do feel sorry for you. Because I know that one day you will look back and you will, re you will realize that what I'm true, what I'm saying is true. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to tell you to stop studying and stop working hard in order to hang out with your friends more often. School is very important. But it's not the only thing that matters in life. What I'm trying to tell you is that we all have a dream, a goal that we wish to reach in our lifetime. And although all dreams are different, they all have one thing in common. We all want to grow up and be happy people, live happy lives. To everyone, my Uncle Bob seemed like the happiest man in the world. Because after all, he had everything one could want in life. A family, fame, money. But the thing I realized from his life is that the desire for more money was actually the, the source of his anger and the source of his substance addictions. Had he spent less time at the office and more time with friend, fam, friends and family, I guarantee you, you'd be standing in this audience today listening to me talk about something completely different, just completely random. But many years from now, when I look back on my life, I'll think of my Uncle Bob. I'll remember him for his sense of humor and constant smile. I'll remember as a kid that every time I heard I was going to be in the same place as him, I was instantly happy. God, I love the man. <laughs> this tie was actually his. I wore it every day the week after I came back from his uh, funeral. Um, and honestly, the reason why I'm smiling with almost everything I do is because I grew up loving the way he lived life. And I wanted to be just like him. But above all, I'll remember the lesson he taught me. In every way possible, enjoy this life. Yeah, money is nice and fun to have, and without it, one could not survive in this world. But when it begins to control your life, something is wrong. Because deep down, we only want to be happy people. <laughs> But growing up in the society, we often think that the only way to be happy is to have lots of money. As my uncle taught me, this is not always the case. And in that split second before he died, he would have traded every penny in the world, every ounce of fame he had obtained in his life, just to see his wife and kids one last time before he passed. Think of the great Gatsby. I won't ruin it for you underclassmen, but Jay Gatsby to most seemed like the happiest man in the world. Lots of money, big house, and had parties all the time. But when he died, but when he died, pretty much nobody came to his funeral. None of the people that showed up at his parties, or even the woman he loved most in the world, none, none of them even bothered to come to his funeral. So ask yourselves, was Jay Gatsby truly a happy person? Enjoy these short years of Gilman. Equally balanced working with having fun and being a teenager. Think about what you truly want to do with your life and do it. I trust that God will all lead us down the right path, but it's up to you to, to decide if you want to take it. And above all, just smile. Do what truly makes you happy and enjoy this life. I know I will. Thank you.